There's a long answer and there's a short answer to the question of what's the difference between an HTTP put and an HTTP post operation. I'm going to start off with a short answer. With a put operation, you need to know the exact URL of the resource that you're updating on the server. You then send all of the information required to create a new representation of that resource on the server, even if you're just doing an update operation. The server takes that information and if the resource already exists, it replaces it with the new data. If a resource doesn't exist at that URL, well, the server creates a new one. Now with a post operation, you don't need to know the exact URL of the resource that you're acting on. With a post operation, you can send data to the server. The server then might be able to create a new resource for you and then send you the actual URL that it creates that points at the new resource that's been created. Furthermore, post operations can be used for a variety of other things besides just create and update operations. In fact, any processing that happens on the server where data, fields, form information is sent to the server and needs processing can be done with a post operation. So with a put operation, it's really restricted to replacing existing resources on the server with new representations. With a post operation, well, it can do just about anything. Now, that's the short answer as to what the difference is between a put and a post operation. The long answer is much more nuanced. And if you stick around, I'll give you that answer. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor in chief over at the serverside.com. And I've got a full article on what the difference is between an HTTP put and an HTTP post operation. If you want a lot of details, go check that out. But if you want to actually know what the nuance is between that post and put operation, along with a little bit of the history of the HTTP protocol, Stick around, because that's exactly what I'm going to give you now. Now, really, to appreciate the difference between a put and a post operation, you, you kind of need to know the history of the HTTP protocol. When the HTTP protocol was first released, version 1, there were only three HTTP methods. The three methods were head, which allows you to get headers of the resource on a, a server without actually downloading it. There was get, which allows you to download a resource on the server, basically retrieve a resource on the server. So anytime you view a web page, you grab some JSON, you listen to an MP3, anytime you're just getting data from the server, whether it's being rendered in a browser or saved onto your file system, that's a get operation. And then three, the third method that the HTTP 1.0 protocol defined was post. And the post operation was to be used anytime you sent data to the server and that server needed to be processed. And that meant anything. So anything that you would do with data sent to the server would be done through a post operation. That could be saving data, deleting data, updating data, processing data, validating data, adding uh, uh, entries to a log file, asking for some data to be calculated and a, a response sent back to you. Like anything that would be done with data sent to the server would be done through a post operation. That's the heritage of POST. Now, when the HTTP 1.0 protocol came out, they kind of thought that POST operation is doing a whole heck of a lot of work and maybe we should kind of relieve that HTTP POST operation a little bit, which is why they came out with the PUT operation. They said, you know, if somebody knows the exact URL of a resource and they want to either create a brand new resource at that URL, or update an existing resource. And I shouldn't say updating because put is not updating. Put actually completely replaces the resource that exists at a specific URL. Whenever you do a put operation, you're supposed to send all of the data required to create that object. Even if you're just changing one or two fields of a property that might have a thousand fields, you're supposed to send all 1,000 fields to the server with a put operation. That's its definition. It doesn't do updates. It can look like it's doing an update, but in fact, it takes the representation that you send as part of the payload and it completely replaces the object on the server at that resource URL. It's also a dumpitant. So if you invoke it multiple times, you always end up in the same state. So. The put operation came out with the HTTP 1.1 protocol. 
also the delete operation came out. So they said, if you want to delete a resource where you know the exact URL, you can just do a, a delete method of the HTTP protocol. That will just delete the resource. And they, they had a couple of other methods in HTTP 1.1. There was trace for helping you do debugging. There was options, which you can use to find out all of the different HTTP verbs, all the different HTTP methods that a given resource supports. There was connect that came out as well, which helps with creating VPN connections through proxy servers. We don't use that really too often. Um, but essentially there were eight. So by time the HTTP 1.1 protocol came out, there were eight different HTTP verbs that you could use in your application. Most RESTful APIs would use get, post, put, and delete. There was actually a, a supplemental extension to the HTTP protocol that introduced a new operation called patch. And the idea of patch is you could actually send data to the server and that would update a resource. So the patch is kind of the idea for update. Because with a put, as I said, if you've got a, a resource with a thousand fields in it, when you do a put operation, you're supposed to send all of those thousand fields, even if it's just an update of one or two of those fields. That's a big waste. So that's what the patch operation was introduced to do. You could update a resource in the server and only provide a few fields, and then the server could update it. I should mention, whenever we talk about HTTP methods, we always talk about whether they're safe, that is whether they'll change things on the server, obviously delete, put, post, and I always want to say batch when I say patch, and patch. Those ones are all unsafe because they change data on the server. The other thing we talk about is idempotence, whether something is idempotent or not. And idempotent means an operation can be invoked multiple times and the server will end up in the same state. Now, I'll give you an example of that. Let's just say maybe I wanted to remove myself from a newsletter subscription. So I send a delete operation to the server that tries to delete my subscription. Now, delete operations have to be idempotent, so do put operations. And so basically, if, if I invoke that URL, if I ask it to be removed from that newsletter, and I don't know, maybe the operation gets lost in translation, and then I invoke it again, and I invoke it again, I get impatient, I invoke it again. Well, even if the server ends up getting 20, 30 invocations asking me to delete my subscription, well, it's always deleted, right? Like the end result, whether it's once or 20 times, is my subscription is deleted. That's idempotent. Something that's not idempotent would be like maybe just saying, let's increase my salary by 10%. Okay? Now, if you actually ran that seven times, you'd end up, your salary would end up double because each time it runs, the salary gets increased by 10%. That would be an example of a method that is not idempotent. And According to the rules of the HTTP protocol, the delete operation has to be idempotent and the put operation has to be idempotent. The post operation, no such rules, no such requirement. It can be or it might not be. Really, <laughs> That's up to you as a developer, up to you as an API architect to decide. Now, as far as the patch operation goes, interestingly, the patch operation does not need to be idempotent either. So that was actually kind of I found that interesting when I found that out. I thought it would have to be. But anyways, that gives you a little bit of an idea of the history of the HTTP protocol. But I think it really puts into perspective what the purpose of the post operation is. And, and more to the point, how the, the, the job of that post operation, that HTTP post verb, post method, has, has slowly whittled away over time. Right. So originally post was there to do any form handling, any processing on the server. Now, really, when you talk about the post operation, really, what does it do? Um, well, it's just there to be a non idempotent method that takes data from the client and processes, processes it in some way. Right? That's really it's like it. And the specification is equally vague. It just kind of says uh, the post operation is there to process that data according to how the server sees fit. Now, I would add to that, that really with the post operation, it's not just there to process data, but it's also there to process data in a way that doesn't step on the toes of the 
put operation, the delete operation, or the patch operation, or the get operation for that matter. So if you need to do processing and the work you need to do doesn't actually fit into a put, post, get, or delete operation, well, the post operation is kind of your catch-all. So anyways, that's the big difference between the put operation and the post operation, those HTTP verbs. The idea is that put operation always operates on an exact URL pointing to a resource and it replaces that resource's representation on the server with the data sent to the server in the payload. The post operation, well, it can do creates, it can do updates. It's not required to use the exact resource of the URL that it, the the exact URL of the resource that it's operating on. And really the post operation can do anything that doesn't fall into a put, delete, or patch operation. And there you go. Now, if you enjoy this tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. We've got lots of great tutorials on RESTful API development, Java, Python, DevOps, Git, GitHub, Scrum, you name it. Um, if you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And if you're watching this on YouTube, why don't you subscribe on YouTube?